Hola a todo mundo que estamos aquí en el primer Decidida Summit. Thank you everyone joining us um, for this first Decidida Summit here. We seek to amplify women's voices and stories in Latin America and to share role models for future generations while creating awareness and how our decisions can and will shape our lives and future. And I am so, so honored and happy to be here with an iconic and legendary writer, journalist, activist, organizer, I think an absolute change maker and inspiration and influence, not only to generations in the US, but also around the whole world. And a decidida herself, the one and only Gloria Steinem. How are you, Gloria? Thank you so much for being here. Well, after that introduction, I'm just worried about living it up, living up to it. No, of course. And, and no. thinking and th thinking with envy that you're bilingual, so you can <laughs> organize way more of the world than I can. Well, we we have our things. We all have our things. This is a <laughs> this is a good tool because it has me talking to you today um, in this in yeah by Zoom, but it's okay. It's, the thing is that we can talk and that we are connected. Um, Gloria, you are a self-described, and I love the term, hopeaholic. Um, I have fallen in love with it. And, and you have this amazing phrase that talks about hope as well. Um, hope is another form of planning, because I need, we need so much of it nowadays. And talking about Latin America, where we have 137 women killed every day by a family member, domestic violence spiked during lockdown, um, and these gender violence hotlines skyrocketed as well. Um, service care and domestic workers, a group which is predominated by women are amongst the most economically affected groups. And with these <laughs> numbers in hand and this happy beginning of our conversation, how do you keep hope alive? Because nowadays the, the world sometimes feels a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's very important that we recognize the reality that you state, uh, which is that everywhere women are more physically and there or everywhere there is patriarchy, which is pretty much everywhere, women are uh, more endangered. And yet often we've probably just begun to leave the stage in which we were blamed for the violence against us. Why didn't we obey? What did we have on? You know, yeah. uh, thanks to the our our various women's movements, I think that that's that's changed. Uh, but what and what gives me hope is the movement that changed it. You, you know, I mean, the, the movement is just people moving, and <laughs> the, the, the fact that um, women, pretty much everywhere that I'm aware of, have had the courage to speak up together to form a movement to envision change, which is of course why hope is a form of planning. Um, so, you know, I, I do feel hopeful, which does not, does not mean that I don't feel equally angry or impatient, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, that it's just step by step and we're getting there, but I think we are. And um, talking about Latin America, yeah, the, the feminist movement is, I think stronger than ever. I remember last year on um, March the 8th, we all marched um, and it was one of the strongest things I've ever had the fortune of, fortune of experiencing. And we are moving forward. And I think, as you said, th there's an opportunity of, of building these bridges between women and sister to sister and community to community. But also I think, uh, men are realizing that this is not a movement against them. I think that was a misconception, um, or it, it is a misconception in Latin America that, that still resounds uh, profoundly, but we're walking towards, that, towards eliminating gender violence and towards a more equal world. And you've mentioned uh, that movements are a gift rather than a source of deprivation. And in your experience, what do you think makes a movement successful? Well, I, I say movements are a gift because they're companionship, friendship, mutual support. You know you're not crazy, you're not alone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also uh, they have uh, great power. So it is that very experience of knowing we're not alone 
of seeing changes in consciousness, in behavior uh, that keeps us from despair. And it's the movement itself because we are communal animals. Human beings are communal, yeah. which is why isolation is probably the biggest punishment anywhere in the world, you know, to be held alone because yeah. we are communal animals. So yeah. the opposite of that is a movement of shared purpose. Yeah, feeling feeling that you're not crazy. I liked that. I, we, we like I like feeling that I'm not crazy. And uh, yeah, talking about being communal and in the in the collective, uh, we would like to acknowledge sisterhoods. And uh, Wilma Mankiller was the first female principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, she was a tour the force, a powerful, powerful force, an activist, a social worker, and I know a dear, dear friend to you. And um, I was wondering if you could share one of, of, of the things you live together, the insights, what you've learned from each other. Uh, <clears throat> she was, uh, as you point out, the only, at the time, the only female chief of, of a, a major nation, but actually, she was a reminder of the past when there was more of a circular egalitarian form of organization. That is maybe what in English or French was called the chief uh, was a male, but he had been chosen by the female grandmothers. So it was about balance of power and uh, contribution to the community and the form of meeting and the ideal form was a circle, it's not a pyramid, not a hierarchy. Uh, the, and, and meetings took place often uh, in a circle and a talking stick was passed around. So you got to talk when you had it and then you passed it on. You know, it's, it's, it, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Huge difference. When I go into a classroom now on some university campus and the chairs are, you know, organized, uh, you know, in rows and so on, if, if, if I just say, okay, well, let's sit in a circle, let's move them and sit in a circle. It's amazing the difference it makes. Yeah. That talking stick thing that should be applicated as to applicated to in social media, no? Because everyone is like, Aah! and I have the right to speak, and nobody listens to anybody. I think that's well. That's I I do I do worry about. I mean, I, social media is a blessing, obviously. Yeah. But I worry about it one because not everybody has it. There are yeah. great spaces on Earth with no electricity, much less yeah. social media. Um. And, and two, because it is individualized in that way. Uh, and uh, you know, I asked a friend of mine who's a technician if we couldn't invent a camera that was in the middle of a group and that was circular. And she said, it's possible. So I think we should work on that. Yeah, we should work toward listening more. I think that that's uh, empathy. I think uh, it's, the, it's what we need the most. Um, what would you say uh, talking about gender violence in, in Latin America. What's the most powerful decision um, a woman can make to eliminate gender violence? I know it's like like a big step saying like, you can do this and you will eliminate, eliminate gender mm -hmm. violence, but sometimes we don't know where well, to begin. Yeah, I mean, certainly to begin with herself, you yeah. know, to, to say, I'm not gonna tolerate this it is not my fault, it is not acceptable. Uh, it doesn't matter who's at fault, using violence uh, is, is not, you know, I mean, we say to kids, use your words, not right. Yeah, it's not acceptable. Uh, and and the, the justification or normalization of it is, is gender, you know, is the masculine role versus the feminine role. So in all of our countries, as far as I know, there were culture, earlier cultures that didn't have gender. Yeah. So it might be helpful just in terms of encouraging our imagination to uh, go back to those, to do a kind of vertical history and say, wait a minute, you know, yeah. people who stood on this land and lived on this land before, um, you know, did not, uh, think of, 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 I mean, nature is not a hierarchy, it's a circle. 
Yeah. Yeah, we should learn from the past. It's a cliche, but there's nothing truer, I think. Um, and Gloria, before we say goodbye, I'd like to do a lightning round game. Um, it's, it's just like a, uh, I will name a feeling and I'd love for you to say or share a decision you've made or whatever linked to these feeling comes to your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, one, two, three, fear. Uh, a a form of instruction, you know, because the fears that are uh, stirred up in us should be listened to. You know, when we fear somebody, there may be a reason, you know, yeah. we should just put it down. Nice. Okay. Challenged. That is uh, sometimes scary but also can turn into instruction because it means you're approaching the unknown. Yeah. It's okay. Freedom. Ah, well, you know, fr freedom is such a wonderful word, isn't it? I mean, because yeah. it just, even, even to say it sets free all kinds of thoughts and ideas and so, you know, so I, I think we should definitely Paint it on our walls, put it on our t shirts. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then there are all the songs, Free at Last, Sweet Jesus, Sweet Free at Last. I mean, <laughs> you know, it is a great word. Exactly. Um, gratitude. Gratitude is uh, a very positive feeling if it's not forced. You know, if you're not made to feel that you should behave in a grateful way for things that actually are everyone's uh, right. logical do in, in life. But okay. gratitude can be a very lovely feeling. Okay, last one, uh, hopeful, hope. Well, hope, I mean, hope is a form of planning. You know, you know if um, it's, it's very, very precious because it tells us what we want, what is possible, what could be. Um, so it, it's it's very very precious and life giving. It's it's motivating. Hope is hope is a good four letter word. <laughs> is a good four letter word. Um, Gloria, thank you so much. I really, really admire your being inclusive, your defending of, of listening of the circle, because that's the only way we learn, like by listening to each other and that's being empathetic. And um, that really resonated with me. You were saying in an interview that if, uh, they asked you if you were nervous of passing the torch mm -hmm. and uh, you said that all of us carry torch. Not yes, I no. I mean, if, if people, it, I guess, at a certain age of mine, people began to, <laughs> to ask me, to whom was I going to pass the torch? And I always said, now, wait a minute, I'm not giving up my torch. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> <It's my laughs> you don't know, have a torch, you don't know where the hell you're going. Uh, <laughs> but I'm using my torch additionally to light the torches of other people, I love you know, because then there is truly light. You've certainly lit a lot of torches and thank you, thank you so much for lighting up Decididas. I think this is a, a good omen for, for like the first summit and, uh, and you being a part of this really, really means a lot. And uh, as we say- no, and, and I'd love to know, I mean, if there's writing and insights or I don't know, you know, what's coming out of this, I would love to know. Yeah. In wait, the circle, right. Okay. Of course, we. Uh, I'll. I'll gladly keep in touch. Um, I'm a huge fan, admirer, and now I'm happy to carry a torch lit by you and by your example. And you're truly an inspiration. And we say in Mexico um, when we do theater, it's like a patada de la buena suerte, so a good luck kick. So I think of our conversation as a good luck kick to Decididas and to be the first, to this summit being the first of many. And it's it was a pleasure. It's been a pleasure talking to you and thank you everyone that joined us in this conversation and let's hope for more Decididas Summit. Thank you thank so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bravo. <laughs>